Hi, Matt Welch here, co-author with Nick Gillespie of the Declaration of Independence, How Libertarian Politics Can Fix What's Wrong with America. This is our last of the Ask a Libertarian Day. We've had a great time. Thank you very much to everybody for sending these thoughtful and challenging questions. Uh, we've certainly learned a lot in the process uh, about each other, really. Yeah, thanks. Um, but uh, I'm going to take the co-author slash moderator's prerogative and ask a last question of my own that gets into some of the stuff that we talk about in the book, uh, which is, Nick, you're sort of the author or the popularizer of the notion of libertarianism being more of an adjective than a noun, a pre-political impulse. Walk us through just a little bit of what you mean by that and how that might play out in our near-term future in American politics. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's useful not to think about libertarian as a, uh, a you know, a set I set of ideas or a set set of programs and policies, but it is an adjective, it's a, it's a descriptor, it's an impulse towards bringing more freedom, more options to people, more choices in any given situation. It's a default setting that can be overridden at times. I think it's on the grow, that's why independents as a group are growing, and it's, more importantly, it's why the Democrats and Republicans, the liberals and conservatives, who for whatever differences they might have, they want to limit choices to the small menu that they say are good. Libertarians go in a different direction, and we've been living in a libertarian world for some time now in all of the areas of our lives that matter most to us away from the government. So when you get outside of education, when you get outside of health care and entitlements, you've got more choices than you ever had before, whether it's the way you live, the way you look, or what you buy. And uh, you know, so that, I think, is going to carry over into the political arena, and it should. Matt, my question for you has to do with the question of, uh, you know, why now? Is it, is it really what we've called the libertarian moment? Why, why is it different this time around? Three reasons. Uh, one is that I don't think in our lifetimes there's been a bigger gap between what the American public are, are obviously expressing, what they want politically to happen, and what their elected leaders are actually doing. I mean, we've had consistent messages basically since the inaction of uh, TARP in the, the fall of 2008. It's been wildly unpopular. Bailout economics is wildly unpopular in addition to being wildly ineffective. And, and wildly bipartisan. And wildly bipartisan. Yeah. And yet, you know, you, we've had Tea Party movements. We have, we've had so much data uh, on this, and it hasn't reached the ears of politicians. So that gap is wide, and yet at the same time, it's never been easier for individual citizens to swarm together in packs about single issues and affect the way things are. Because the third reason, Democrats and Republicans have less market share. Their, 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 their web over our brains is, uh, is less. This, the magic spell is being broken. And so all of this is combining to make us understand you know, the great stuff that we can do in our private lives. We're beginning to be able to inflict it on the Winnebago of state. Well, Matt, it's been a pleasure working with you, obviously, for years now. But writing the Declaration of Independence, which is for sale now online and in meat space as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. And thanks to everybody for uh, watching and also sending in your questions. We only got to a very small fraction, but it was a hell of a lot of fun.